everyone. Welcome back to Doodling Through Education. I'm incredibly excited to start this school year with you again. I hope you all had an excellent summer and got to spend a lot of time with your family and friends doing fun things. Um, for my CC students, this is cycle one. And today we have a video talk, talking about the classifications of living things. So this is a science video. This would be week one. Now, I wanted to remind you that we have a new workbook available for science and history. Um, these worksheets have been created to go along with each of the Doodling Through Education videos. So you can um, go ahead on and head on over to doodlingthrougheducation.com. We have a launch sale happening right now. And so um, if you use the code half off, you get 50% off of those workbooks. I really think that these um, worksheets are going to enhance your students' learning and help them to apply some of the things they learn in these videos. Uh, without further ado, let's start doodling. Like I said, we're going to be talking about the classifications of living things. The term that we use for this is taxonomy. This is the study of the classification of living things. Classifications of living things can sort of be thought of like the classification system in a library. So if you've ever been to a library, there are different sections and they all contain different types of books. For example, there's a mystery section, there's a kids section, there's an adventure section, there's a young adult section. Those areas are then divided further into fiction or nonfiction. And then in those sections, it can be further divided by the type of book. Like all of these books are about animals and all of these books are about history. The way that we organize the living things in the study of biology and in our world kind of works the same way. There are different levels or groups of classification. The highest level of groups are the largest and they include the biggest number of animals. And in each big group, it is then divided into smaller groups with similar characteristics. And then those smaller groups are even divided further into even smaller groups with even more similar characteristics. So there are eight major levels of classification. It goes domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. And I wanna help you remember this using an acronym. All you need to remember is that domain comes first and then you can remember the rest of the act. So remember, domain comes first. Then King Philip came over for good spaghetti. And each of the words in that saying first letter corresponds to the first letter in the classification system. So who developed this classification system? Although this classification system has been tailored and changed and improved upon, Carlos Linnaeus, who was a Swedish plant scientist, is the man who is credited with inventing this classification system. So let's go ahead and dive into talking about what the domains and kingdoms of living things are. And then since it would take a very long time to classify all the living things on earth, we'll go ahead and just pick a few different animals and talk specifically how they're classified to give you an example. So the very first classification we use are domains. And this is the highest level of classification, which means that it contains the most organisms. And there are three domains across all living things. And the first domain is archaea. These are single-celled organisms 
and are different than bacteria, which we'll talk about in a few minutes, because they typically live in extreme environments. And so examples of these are very, very hot areas, or even in soil with a very high level of acid. Now, the second domain is bacteria. Bacteria can live in almost any type of environment, um, and some bacteria can even cause disease in plants, and some can cause disease in animals. But they are very important organisms in many different ecosystems. And the third do domain is called eukarya. These are all organisms that have a nucleus in their cell. So remember, we just talked about um, organisms in archaea. They are single-celled organisms and organisms in bacteria and organisms in both of these domains do not have a true nucleus. If you are looking at a cell that has a nucleus, it belongs in this third domain, eukarya. So after we see the three domains, we can break it down even further into kingdoms. And there are six kingdoms. The first kingdom is Archaea. Now this sounds familiar, right? This is actually um, also a kingdom and it is the only kingdom in the Archaea domain. So there's the Archaea domain and then the Archaea kingdom underneath that. The domain only has one kingdom and that includes the organisms that we talked about. The second kingdom is bacteria. Now, like archaea, bacteria is the only kingdom in the bacteria domain. So we have the bacteria domain, and underneath that we have the bacteria kingdom, and that includes all the bacteria that we talked about. Now, the other four kingdoms are all part of the eukarya domain. The third kingdom in the eukarya domain is going to be called protista. This includes protists, and protists are single-celled organisms. Some examples of protists are algae um, and protozoans. The fourth kingdom is fungi, and this sounds familiar because you know the word fungus, but most fungi have many cells and they're typically arranged in thread-like groups. So examples of um, organisms found in the fungi kingdom are mushrooms, yeasts, and molds. And the fifth kingdom is planti. And this sounds familiar, and I bet you can guess what organisms are in this kingdom. Plants. Plants also contain many, many, many cells. And a distinguishing characteristic of plants is typically they are green or have parts that are green. And we will talk in future videos this year about why plants are green. So stay tuned for that. And then last is the largest kingdom um, of all the kingdoms. And it is also found under the eukarya domain. And this is Animalia. Like fungi and plants, animals have many, 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 many cells. And so unlike all the other things that we have talked about up until this point, animals are different because most of them can move around independently and interact with their surroundings. So we will talk about some of these different classifications and animals and um, living things as we progress through this part of the year. But I wanted to go ahead and jump um, to looking how to classify certain things that we are familiar with. And the first one I want to do is a dog. So let's look how a dog is classified. For the dog, it is classified in the domain Eukarya, in the kingdom Animalia, in the phylum Chordata, in the class Mammalia, in the order Carnivora, in the family Canidae, in the genus Canis, and the species Lupus. 
So I want you to take a look at these classifications and notice that each name is capitalized except when we come all the way down to the species. The genus and species names are italicized and that species name is not capitalized. So if we were to refer to the scientific name of a dog, we would call it Canis lupus. So we would include the genus and the species. Next, let's look at how people are classified. So people are in the domain Eukarya, the kingdom Animalia, the phylum Chordata, the class Mammalia, and it's all the same as the dog up until this point, right? And then we switch. We are in the, the primate order. We are in the family Hominidae. We are in the genus Homo and the species Sapiens. So look at this classification. And like I referred to while we were doing this, the dog's classification. Look at what is similar and look at what is different. This shows that dogs and humans are both mammals with a backbone because they're in the chordata phylum. But then once we hit the order classification, that is where the differences begin to arise. So let's look at one more classification to compare to. And this one is a little bit different. Let's look at the classification of a crab. So again, we are in the domain Eukarya. We are in the kingdom Animalia. But then we come to the phylum and all of a sudden we are in the phylum Arthropoda. And then we come to class, we are in the class that is named Malacostraca, and the order Decapoda, and the family Portunidae. And then we get to their scientific name, genus Portunus, and the species Pelagicus. So, like we did with dogs and humans, how does a crab compare to dogs and humans? The differences arise much sooner in this instance in the phylum category. Uh, crabs are not mammals, they are arthropods. And so that is where we begin to see the differences. So that's all we have for today. Classifying living things is important because it helps us to better understand God's world. If we can classify things and study how they're similar or different to other things, it, help us, it helps us to understand um, how God created each of the animals on this planet and how he created a special and different than the animals. So I wanted to remind you again to hop on to Doodling Through Education. Um, you can buy that workbook there so that you can follow along with these videos um, and help your students even more to apply the things that they have learned. And on that note, remember to be kind, follow God's will, and take care. Bye.